Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I'm real excited to see what she's going to provide today. And this is insight for anybody that has a pet. She's an animal communicator and also also an energy therapist, which I find fascinating. There are communicators out there, but she also combines the energy aspect of it to really see what's going on with our pets. She's going to read mine today. Curious what's going to come out of this. She's Holly Starr. She joins us once again. Welcome. How are you doing? Wonderful. How are you today? Very well. Very well. Uh, intrigued about this whole process. Uh, I sent you, uh, emailed you pictures of uh, two of my three, which is a dog and a cat. I have another cat that I didn't include for you to keep it simple today. Is that all you need? How do you do this just by looking at the pictures? Yeah. So my sessions are done via Zoom um, pretty much 100% nowadays. Um, and so all I ask of a client is to email me or text me a picture of their pet and, of course, their name. And then I get questions from the client and we just go through a conversation and it's the pets will share what they want to share and they won't share what they don't want to share. <laughs> So because this is energy and energy has no space and time, is it correct for us to assume that that's how you can make that connection? The pet doesn't have to be before you uh, and it doesn't have to be on the Zoom or anything like that because of that energy connection. That's how you can do it. Yes, this has nothing to do with our physical bodies it's purely soul connection, energy connection. Um, I've even talked to talked to dogs when they are um, just coming up out of anesthesia and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, you don't need that physical physicality there. Mm. So what do you think? Should we just dig right into it now? Yeah, I would say so. Yep. And you're going to have to um, monitor my time. Um, so maybe about 10 minutes on, on each pet here. All right. So I, I'll, uh, I'll show you my whole process. So prior to, uh, getting on a call with a client, I always sit and set my intentions. So I want to make sure that everybody is safe and loved in the space. So I'm going to go ahead and just set my intentions with you all right. So our intention right now in talking with Rocco and Tanner and sharing their messages with people to learn about animal communication is very pure. I want Rocco and Tanner's utmost good to be at the forefront of these sessions today. I also have the highest good in mind for myself and for Steve and anyone else listening as well. Okay. All right. So I am going to just start with Rocco. So Rocco is here. I'm going to share this screen with you all. Okay. So this is Steve's Rocco. And I'm going to be assessing Rocco's energy system right now. So Rocco's root chakra. Open. Sacral open, solar plexus, open, throat, open, heart, open, brow, open, crown, open. And is Rocco's heart aligned? Okay. So everything's open, Steve. That is wonderful. So as we communicate here, I'm just going to do what's called a bridging technique. And that is simply strengthening that balance within his energy system. Okay. All right. So I am going to just take a moment here, connect with Rocco. And I like to first describe just the overall energy and feelings that I'm, I'm getting from the pet. So. All right. Rocco. Okay, so Rocco to me feels like 
he, he can at least have some like spastic higher types of energy times. And this is, he says, this is out of enthusiasm for life. <laughs> he likes to, uh, Steve, is he one of these cats that will like dart around at times? This is what he's showing. This is what he feels in his energy and in his body where he gets these times where he just feels enthusiastic and, and just, just happy. Do you see that on his physical side or is he keeping that inside of his body? He does it. And I wonder about it. And it's usually <laughs> in the early evening. I'll just be maybe sitting on the couch or whatever. And he'll just go. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why he's doing it. I'm, I, I wonder, you know, is he seeing something that I'm not seeing an energy or whatever. And sometimes he'll just, he'll let out, you know, like a meow. and just like a ricochet. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but he does, he does it not every day, but I would say a couple of times a week. Yeah. So Rico, share with me, share, share more of what you're, what you're experiencing when you go into those times, because you're bringing that up. So I want to make sure you get to share that with your daddy fully. So you're saying share more of what he does in that capacity? Yeah. Yeah. So sorry, when I'm doing sessions, I speak out loud as I'm talking to the animals. So that oh, you I'm can sorry. Know. I thought you were talking to me. Okay. I'll shut up. <laughs> you're, <okay. laughs> you're perfectly fine. Oh. All right, sweetie. So go ahead and, and share. <laughs> okay. So he's talking about in those times, he, he, he's already said it. It's just enthusiasm for life. It just kind of hits him in the right way. And his energy is just like, need to let it out. <laughs> and one of the things that he is loving when he's darting around like that, it's, um, it, it's like wind in his face. He's loving the fact that he can zoom through the air like that and feel it all just rush over him. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so sweetie, your daddy brought up a few questions for you. So let's start with your relationship with him. What do you think of your relationship with your daddy? He says he doesn't get me at times. There's this, there's this look, it looks like that you give him. That's kind of like, what? What are you trying to tell me? What are you? What are you trying to do with this? And so what are you trying to tell daddy typically when that happens, sweetie? What do you want him to understand more about with you? What is that word? Okay. So Steve Rocco is funny. He says, I'm a cat of my own corral he uses the word corral and he uses that term and i'm not even fully aware of of logic what that term means but he is talking about he's basically um one in his own pack he wants to he wants to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it and he wants to be able to just express himself freely whether that is in a um, downplaying tone or a the darting around, the being goofy, the being um, spastic and that kind of stuff. And so how would you want your daddy to, um, to show you like, I get that. I understand that about you. Okay. So Steve, you're going to have to start darting around your house with Rocco. <laughs> Okay. He wants to. <laughs> he wants you to basically whatever he is wanting to do and express at that time. He wants you to accept that and do it alongside of him. So come and join him when he's curled up on the couch. Um, just give him that playful tone when he's wanting to dart around and 
ask him what he's looking for when he's exploring. He shows himself exploring in the house as well. Okay. All right. So, sweetie, your daddy also wanted to ask you about your past experiences prior to coming and living with him for the rest of your life. Can you share with me? Um, maybe we start at your birth. Can you show me what was around you? Okay. So it looks like he came from a litter of, of maybe there's like six or so other kittens. It's, it's a good number of other kittens like right around him. Were you inside, outside? Where were you born? What's there is structure. It feels very wooden though. Um, I would put this structure in like almost like a shed type of, of place, uh, possibly a barn, but it, it just feels, it feels more confined, just smaller than um, a full on barn. Hmm. Okay. And can you show me how was your relationship with your mommy? Healthy, good. He feels, it feels like he was, he was very much accepted in his litter. This is a really good start to his life. And what happened from there, sweetie pie? So you were in a truck, being transported a truck. It feels like he, he kind of got um, like moved around to a few different places and is there anything from these different places you want to share with your daddy? Is there anything he needs to know about your past that's still affecting you now? Yeah, you were in a shelter. Okay. And was there anything from the shelter that sticks with you? Okay, so Steve, I don't know that he will necessarily end up needing to be in this situation again. Um but if you ever need to bring him to a space that he's showing um, high ceiling, higher ceilings and like the cement um, type of feel from a shelter, that that whole environment and feeling is uh, a bit triggering for him as far as anxiety goes nowadays still. So if you ever need to... Um, like look around at your vet the next time you're there. If there's a space that feels that way, try to avoid that. If he ever needs to go into a store with you, um, I I would try to avoid having him go in. Okay. Is there anything else about your past that your daddy needs to know? So he had some some issues with digestion, it looks like, growing up. Um, some parasites, some worms, stuff like that going on. Sweetie, do you still feel that inside of your tummy? Or do you feel pretty good now? So he does still feel a little, um, he's showing me like, almost like a green type of, of coloring inside of his tummy. And that just kind of gets upset and and congested at, at times with that. Hmm. So a lot of this does come in line with, I believe he was found next to a building. I don't know for sure. Um, probably would have been in a wooded area. Might have been part mm -hmm. of like the back of a gas station. Um Can you ask him about, so we have this thing, he, he kisses me all the time. Like I walk in, he jumps up on the counter. I'm like, Rocco, give me a kiss. And he goes, he's up here. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah. And he'll even like reach up. And he was like, you know, give me, I'm not even kidding. I've never seen yeah. him. Like, he's like the most loving ever. Um, even I walk into the bathroom, he's like Poop, up on the countertop and he's like, come on, give me some love. Um, yes. What What's going on there? Mm 
He says, well, you're my daddy. So Steve, I do. He is very, he's super affectionate. This is just him at his core. And Okay. So he's saying when, when you grow up, like I did with a good connection to your mom and, and to, um, the siblings within the litter that you are then able to take that affection and put it into other places in life. And hmm. So he wants you to know that it's like his, we've talked about his enthusiasm for life. Like as you were talking about that, he's talking about being very interactive. He wants to be interactive with the life around him and embrace it and, and be affectionate towards them. Like affection and interaction would probably be the top two words that I would describe him with, um, feeling his energy like I am right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Rocco, mm. your daddy also wants to know how you feel about Ricky, your brother. He's, is Ricky... He said, Ricky is slower going than I am. Is he seeing that correctly? Now you're asking me? Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, Ricky is more, I would say, laid back, not in your face like Rocco is. Um, yeah. A little cautious, a little careful from time to time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he sees that. So Rocco is interpreting that as as slower going than I am. Like this, this has to do with the energetics of it and with the passion to get in there and experience life. Okay, so Rocco, with this, I want you to remember though that those those. Um, less vibrant or uh, more laid back kind of characteristics in your brother. Those are very acceptable, sweetie. Those are wonderful characteristics to still have, even though he doesn't match what you're doing with life. Okay. His approach is very okay as well. Is there anything you want to share with your daddy about Ricky? So Ricky's needing, um, the needing that cats do with their paws. Oh yeah. He is like, um, you'll have to watch Rocco and see if he's watching Ricky do this because he is like really taken aback by just how much he does that and how he does it. He really likes to watch him do that. That's funny. I call it the pushy thing. <laughs> The pushy. Yes, that is accurate as well. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to run out of time, but how yes. about we pivot over to Tanner? Yes. Cool. Okay. And thank you, Rocco. Okay. All right. We will assess Rocco's chakras really fast. This is for Rocco or Tanner. Tanner's root chakra. So the root chakra is compromised. This has to do with uh, feelings of being grounded and being safe and all of those things. Tuner's sacral. Solar plexus. Throat. Heart. Brow. Crown. Is Tanner's heart aligned? Okay. Dante and soul seat individuality point. Okay. So Steve, everything is compromised with Tanner. And what I find when the Hara is compromised, you have to get that open and in line prior to being able to keep the main chakras opened. Okay. So after our session, I'm going to get in with him, and open up his Hara and make sure that that things are flowing correctly for him.
All right, let me just connect in. All right. Hi, Tanner. My name's Holly. Your daddy has a few questions for you. Are you willing to answer them? He's a little bit unsure, but I'm just going to go in just real easy. All right. So, sweetheart, why don't you um, just tell me about your living situation right now? Do you do you like where you are? So he's bringing up the lighting. He enjoys the lighting. But it, it's like a higher, a higher lighting that he's enjoying. Okay. And what's the feel? What's the environment feel like? How are you driving with things? He says, I, I feel a bit disconnected. Okay. So that's Okay, so once I get him grounded again, because he's showing himself kind of like his energy is is floating up over him. Like he he doesn't feel connected to himself even. Hmm. And sweetie, do you know where this feeling is stemming from? A lack of appreciation. A lack of appreciation from, from who, sweetheart? Okay. So this is, he's showing me a, a long, a lot, a line and, and basically feeling like he has never felt appreciated all throughout his life. And, mm -hmm. and, and sweetheart, why aren't you currently feeling? He says, I never learned that. That's part of me. And so I want you to know that that can absolutely be part of you. I'm going to work on your energy today and get you back in alignment and feeling more grounded and balanced out. And then after that, I want you to focus on knowing yourself and appreciating yourself. Because when we appreciate ourselves, others will see that and appreciate us as well. And I just want you to grab hold of that, embrace it. And move forward because the people that haven't appreciated you in the past, they don't matter anymore. And if they didn't appreciate you, they probably weren't good people. And you are in a safe, loving environment now. So we need to focus on that. We are just at about at a time. I, I was okay. <laughs> like, I don't, you're good. You're good. Thank by. you for uh, getting in there. I can go on and on with these things. <laughs> well, you know, it, if uh, you want to reach out to me, you know, after and then next time we get together, we can even further validate. Um, but super cool. And even not every cat darts all over the place. No, not at all. Like, the, how would you even pick that up? <laughs> that was like, yeah, weird. He loves it. Steve's going to be darting all over the place with Rocco now. <laughs> I know. I'm beyond, I'm beyond all fours running around. And I always wondered, you know, when he first started doing it, I was like, did something not agree with his stomach? You know, maybe he ate and it's just like, I'm not feeling good because he weird noises like rah, rah, doom, doom, yeah. doom, doom, all over. Um, he's just having fun, apparently. Right. He's embracing life. Yes. That's wow. what he's all about. Wow. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he and Tanner. And Ricky too, but more, more Rocco and Tanner, like very sweet, very loving, very just good energy. That's all I'm going to say. Good energy. Yeah. Um, good. Had, and we'll get Tanner opened up and and help him through this insecurity that he's having. Yeah, I can understand potentially why. You know, there's a backstory there, but uh, okay. Uh, wow, interesting. How how does somebody do this if they want to connect with you? Potentially get a reading or some kind of communication, yeah. how do they find you? Yeah, so my website is hollyjoystar.com, H-O-L-L-Y-J-O-Y-S-T-A-R-R.com. Um, that is the same email at gmail.com. 
And you can also find me on Facebook, Holly Star Dash Animal Communicator. Um, and those reach out however you want for uh, your own session. And I also just released a course on my website. So you can check that out and learn for yourself and start doing this for, for your own pets. Really cool. I love the fact that you check the chakras. A lot of animal communicators that I know of, they don't look at it in that way. Um, I think that's very important. So uh, yes. kudos to you. Yeah. Yes, it really is. Cool. You're not going to get anywhere if the energy is all clogged up. <laughs> exactly. Super cool. Thanks for today. Really appreciate yes. it. Yes, you're welcome. I'll talk to you later. Yep, we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.